Welcome everyone. Today we have a really special project. A while back, my friend Kiro from Kiros Workshop asked if I would collaborate with him, and I couldn't have been happier to say yes. I'm sure you all know exactly who he is, but if you don't, you absolutely have to check out his channel. He does some really incredible things with his dolls. The theme we decided on for this collab was Enchanted Forest. Now, I've had a Batsy Clara doll in my stock box for such a long time. I think her sculpt is one of the most beautiful out of all the Monster High dolls, and she is one of the more rare girls, so I had been saving her for a special occasion. And this was it. With her adorable upturned nose and long pointed ears, I knew I had to turn her into some kind of elven character. Very regal and majestic, but also with a touch of whimsy and cuteness. The first thing I do is swap out her body. The Batsy doll has two holes in her back where you can insert her wings. But since she is going to be a flightless elf, I trade it for a Draculara body. Their skin tone is almost identical, but Miss Drac has no wing holes. The base for her outfit is going to be made from chain, so I start measuring out the structure in a kind of draft form with some string. I want her outfit to be a beautiful low-backed gown that is dripping in leaves and flower petals, so I create a base for a skirt and a kind of chest piece, and some decorative chains down her back and around her arms. Once I create all the measurements for the garment, I start constructing it out of chains and jump rings. As I'm constructing the chain elements, I'm very careful to keep the chains untwisted and to always cut the chains with an odd number of links. This will allow the jump rings to all lay flat on her body, nothing poking out. With the base of the garment mostly done, it's time to move on to the petals and leaves. I spent a long time trying to choose the right method to use to create something that looked organic, but also pretty sturdy. I loved the idea that something as delicate as a petal could also serve as a kind of armor. So I start by creating shapes out of gold wire. I wrap a length around something round and twist it off at the end. Then I use pliers to shape it into a whimsical shape. This time I'm making a leaf, so I make it fatter nearer the stem and taper it off to a point at the end. I also add little crimped details for a whimsical and organic feel. Once I'm happy with the shape, I use the same bottle to add some gentle curves to the wire piece. I repeat this many times in lots of different shapes and sizes. This time I'm making a petal, so I make it skinnier towards the stem and add lots of crimping around the rounder end of the petal. This is not based on any specific flower, but I was very inspired by native Australian and African plants like proteas and waratahs. Then it's time to dip them in resin. This is a special kind of dipping resin that is a little bit thicker than regular resin. This allows you to create a kind of film on the inside of the wire frame. Once you dip them, they are extremely fragile and very likely to break or pop like a little bubble, so they go immediately under the UV lamp to cure. I think in total I made around 95 or 100 individual petals, so this process was very time consuming. 
but there's still lots more to go. I sort all the pieces into two piles, either petals or leaves, and then start mixing some coloured resin. First I take some alcohol ink and then some white Perlex powder with a green shift and mix it into the resin to create a shimmery pastel green colour. Then I paint this onto all of my leaf shapes. Not only to add the colour, but the second layer of resin helps to reinforce its strength. Next, I mix a pink and pastel gold colour. I paint this in an ombre effect over the petal pieces. Each of the petals received two coats of colour to enhance the ombre and the vibrancy of the colours. With a hundred odd resin pieces complete, it's time to start adding them to the garment. This first pass, I just attach them loosely to make sure I'm happy with their placing. Once I have something I like, I add a gold crimper bead to each stem, which allows me to attach the pieces more permanently with my pliers. Soon enough I realised I made a big mistake in the design of the chain system. The weight of the petals is pulling the dress forward and down, so I end up adding a piece of chain which will sit at the back of her neck. I actually end up changing this to a finer chain later, off camera. With that problem solved, I can add the final four petals to her chest, and the dress is complete. I decide to reroute her hair, which is a bit of a change for me, but with the style I was planning it just seemed to be the best choice. I reroute her with this beautiful white yarn, it's super soft and shiny, and a chunky type which gives me a beautiful natural looking wave in the final hair. I untwist the three sections of the yarn and start pulling small chunks out of it. I use just my fingertips and pull gently to make sure I only pull out full fibre lengths. I trim off one end to make it nice and neat, give it a little twist and slip it onto my rerouting tool. Then I plunge it into her head. It's simple as that, I just repeat it until her entire head is full of beautiful wavy hair. I fill her head with tacky glue and smear it around with a cotton bud, or q-tip, and wait for it to dry, and her hair is complete. 
I protect her hair by wrapping it in some scrap fabric and I can start her face up. Using my new Caran d'Ache Supra Color watercolor pencils, I start sketching out her bottom waterline in red and her top lash line in brown. It will eventually be black, but brown will be easier to correct if I happen to make a mistake. I've recently been obsessed with a ton of different artists on Instagram who make resin eyes for BJD dolls. One thing that I notice is they often create a grey ring around the iris, which softens the transition from the colour of the eye to the white sclera. This creates a really gentle effect, which I wanted to try out with a painted doll face up. So even though I'm giving her green eyes, the first thing I do is draw in the outline of her eyes in grey. Then once I'm happy with the shape, I create an ombre effect from a cool mint green to a light yellow. I also start drawing in some shadows and the beginning of her pupil with brown. I normally never start lashes on my first layer, but I guess this doll is full of first times. <laughs> my go-to lash design is normally three or four short chunky ones, but I wanted to try and make them longer, but still in my style, so I just give her four long lashes on top. I find with different doll artists, lashes are one of the things that really make each of their styles recognisable. So I want to try and stick to the style I love to draw, while still exploring different versions of that. Before I finish my first layer, I go in with chalk pastels to start her blushing. and add a layer of pink Perlex powder over the top. I make sure to focus a lot of colour and sparkle on her ears. They are such a beautiful part of Batsy Sculpt, so I really want to emphasise them as much as possible. I give her a spray of MSC and continue to build up the colour and vibrancy of my pencil work on the second layer. This includes starting to build up the pupil and shadow in the eye as well as darkening her eyelashes and waterline. For the more detailed work, like her eyelashes, I pick up the watercolour on a wet brush to allow for super fine and precise lines. I continue adding the shadow in her eye by adding grey pastel to the top half. I add more blush to her face, especially focusing on the hood of her eyes. I chose not to draw in defined creases this time, so I wanted to make sure I still added lots of depth with pastels. I move on to her lips and just start building up a gentle rosy colour. Now to the most stressful part, eyebrows. I really wanted to give her white eyebrows, and I think they really add to the fantasy element of her design, leaning into the type of elven designs we often see in art and film. I first sketch the individual hairs in watercolour pencils, then enhance the lines with watercolour on a brush, and finally add the most opaque layer with acrylic paint. Definitely the most scary step. I continue adding detail with white paint, enhancing her catch lights and adding highlights to her waterline, nose and lips. At this point I realise I need to add some more depth to her lips, so I go back in with some watercolour to deepen them.
And before sealing her again, I add another layer of Perlex powder for that beautiful twinkle. To add some texture to her skin, I go in with different shades of pink and white watercolours, just dabbing it on in random spots and then using paper towel to lift the excess so just the outside ring remains. I love this technique for adding texture in a way that seems very artistic and illustrative. I use it for freckles and birthmarks as well as just readying up some blush. I think that at the end of the day I'm never trying to make a doll that looks like they were painted in the factory, so these kinds of touches are something I really love adding. I gloss her eyes and lips, and her face up is finished. I add some pink blush and white highlights to her knuckles and fingertips. I'm being pretty subtle with her body blushing this time, but you can never forget the hands. I also add some pinky, freckly birthmark textures. And of course I give her feet the same treatment. I also add some pink freckles on her shoulders. I wanted her to feel like royalty without giving her a crown, so I decided to go for some hair jewellery. I sketch out a quick idea and then make it out of chain and the smaller sleeves I had made. I also construct some gold anklets for her. To bring even more attention to those incredible sculpted ears, I give each two piercings and a chain to join them together. And with that, she's all done. My guardian of the enchanted forest is complete, and I hope you love her. I want to give a huge thank you to Kira from Kira's Workshop for inviting me to this collaboration and for inspiring me to create this doll. Make sure you check out his channel and see the absolutely stunning doll he created for this collab. His interpretation of Enchanted Forest is truly beautiful. If you like this doll or this video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and to follow me on Instagram at MrSuperCustoms. This doll, as well as some of my other creations, will be available for adoption there, so make sure you check it out. Have an awesome day!